Hello guys and welcome to what is sure to be a screaming top four world championship X-Wing match. My name's Steven. And I'm Zach. And we're with Team Covenant. We are blessed to get cameras on this game and uh, we're joined by Jonathan Gomes or Gomez. You Do you remember? I'm gonna go Gomes. I think it's Gomes on the left and then uh, Paul Heaver on the right. Two incredibly well-known X-Wing players uh, from what I can tell. Both very active on the Team Covenant site and uh, super happy to see these guys in the top four. Now, we have a, a couple of interesting lists here. Jonathan, over here on the left, screaming in with three rookie pilots, and then Luke decked out with R2-D2, draw their fire, and a shield upgrade. What do you make of that list there? I think it's awesome. Uh, that's a that's a hardy Luke. <laughs> it's the a very shield, hardy Luke. Uh, you, he can basically screen the crits with his shields and then heal him with R2-D2. It's just kind of a pain. You, d you it, it's a it's a great list for dividing damage and making your opponent not really be able to get the job done. And if you can keep that many X-Wings on the board uh, for too long, you can be a real problem for your opponent. Well, we've certainly see a, seen a lot of X-Wings recently. I feel like the light side has ticked up a bit against a really heavy swarm field for so long. And it's really cool to see two strong light side lists here uh, coming into the top four. And on the other side of it, we've got Paul, who's doing it a bit differently. He's got two X-Wings. One's a rookie pilot. One is Biggs. And then he has two of these beautiful B-Wings, and uh, they have advanced sensors on them. So an, a different take, certainly, on uh, what this kind of list can do. And the B-Wings, I remember seeing Paul use these to tremendous effect because of those advanced sensors. And this is a list that he's been, I think, uh, really heralding for a while. And we're going to see if it can compete here in the top four. I've got a feeling, being is that he's at the top four of the World Championship, that it's going to do OK. It's probably going to be an OK list. An uh, important kind of story to tell here regarding uh, Jonathan, he, he originally missed this top 16 cut simply because his name came later in the alphabet, basically. Yeah, there was a tie for 16 and 17. And uh, perfectly tied on tiebreakers, win-loss record, etc. And uh, essentially it was like, well, if you have every right to play for this spot, but if you do, then the, you know, 16 is not going to start until like midnight. And so Jonathan kind of stepped away and said, you know what, it's... It's not worth it for the rest of the, the X-Wing players here to have to suffer because of that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just give up my spot, even though, I, I, I mean, it was obvious that he really wanted to play. And uh, then later on, there was apparently an error, and uh, it was Dustin Poskachil. Uh, he had an error on a score sheet that mistakenly put him in the top 16. He kept trying to, to let FFG know, and they were like, well, it's too late. We can't do anything. And after... A lot of attempts, they find out like, okay, you know, we'll sub Jonathan in for you. And then Jonathan gets all the way to the top four now. Top so four. Obviously deserved to be here. Um, had had an emotional roller coaster, I'm sure, of, of an evening. And I'm really happy to see that that was ultimately the right call, both by the player base that insisted on having fairness in this tournament and uh, for FFG finally honoring that request. And I think that speaks volumes about what you're getting into when you join up with this X-Wing community. It is... Uh, we say this about a lot of gaming communities. I think all of the FFG communities are pretty outstanding just because of the nature of the LCGs and the attitude that FFG puts forward for their games. Uh, but X-Wing in particular consistently stands out as something that is truly fascinating and, and just a great group of guys uh, that are playing the game for the spirit of the game and not necessarily just to uh, you know come in and, and wreck face and, and tr be kind of nasty about it. So. Couldn't say better things about this group, and uh, as we watch the game start off, Jonathan having a nice little X-Wing line uh, there, and Paul moving his B-Wings and X-Wings perfectly, keeping uh, one outside, looks like Biggs on the outside there, and they're gonna make a pass here. Asteroids perfectly in the middle of the board, and I wonder uh, if they're gonna try to play through those Asteroids or come around the outside corner. Always the question, we've seen uh, We've seen a lot of a lot of players really stick to the open space just to avoid the asteroids altogether, and I don't think Paul's going to be able to do that here. I think he's going to have to make a move inside, uh, or they're just going to go in circles for a while. Yeah, I think that's a move you, it, it, that's more typical of when you have uh, dark side versus light side, because the the rebels are just not quite as maneuverable. Um, yeah. So the asteroids can present a much bigger problem, and in this case, um, Jonathan's X-wing list is actually I, in an odd way. Uh, has more natural mobility, but uh, the the event sensors with the the barrel roll and B wings gives them an edge. So I, I would say mobility is kind of equal. Um, if they get in the asteroids, it should be a pretty fair fight. Um, so I'm curious to see how how they do this. I do know Paul's probably going to try to do his best to keep Bigs um, within range one of his ships, but also in the background. A lot of times you can screen and move in such a way 
that Biggs will be at range three while the rest of your ships are shooting at range one. Yeah. Um, and or range two. And there's just some really interesting things you can do there. So it looks like he's moving yeah, forward. Yeah, I think he's going to accelerate and try to push around this corner. And I've seen Paul do some really fantastic things with these B-Wings, doing some, some excellent K-turns since he can focus before he gets the stress from the K-turn. And, and I feel like that's one thing that this list is really built upon is that concept of, you know, getting those amazing B-Wing K-turns without the penalty of losing your action. And it just makes them really terrifying whenever they're in the field and just uh, way more maneuverable than you would expect them to be for certain. And, and having that focus going into an attack, of course, with three offensive dice is, is always something worth doing. And uh, on top of that, you get a barrel roll. Barrel roll is a fantastic thing. It is a, it's a big deal for the Rebels. Um, it's, it's a level of mobility they didn't really have before the B-Wing. Advanced and sensors really make it sing, though. Advanced sensors and five shields on these B-Wings. Consistently impressed with uh, their performance here at really, look at this 27-cost ship. And it does some serious work. I think a lot more work than you'd expect from a 27-pointer there. Just the five shields alone can really eat through a lot of, uh, a lot of strategies here. Yeah, there's a lot of comparisons made in the community between an X-Wing and a, um, a B-Wing and which one is better. And uh, I think this is going to be a pretty good test case. You have a whole bunch of X-Wings versus really the same list subbing out B-Wings. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's shield damage prevention versus agility. And uh, that, I think that certainly gives the edge to the X-Wing in certain uh, instances, but in others, the, the five shields, just a guaranteed thing. Don't have to roll any dice, just got to take the hits and, and plow ahead. Yeah, as long as you can be in a position to deal some damage and get some ships going, uh, the shields are a guaranteed thing. Whereas, you know, sometimes you're rolling a TIE Interceptor and you roll three dice and you get zero evades and yeah, you just die. Yeah, for sure. And then sometimes you don't ever need shields because you just keep rolling impressive evades. Yeah. So it's a game of dice and it's really how risk averse I think you are ultimately. Uh, the X-Wing's playing a little closer to the seat of their pants, I think. Someone's going to make the cut here, and I just have a feeling it's going to be Jonathan. Oh, there's Paul making his first cut. And expertly maneuvered through that asteroid. And I wonder if the B-Wing is going to follow suit here. I can't imagine they're going to split up. Maybe some tight turns. I think this is uh, really good for Paul. Um, because Look at that. That's a great vector here that we're, we're attacking from. It is great. Um... Because he's he's decided to cut first here, and the next turn he should be in range to get some shots off. Um, and for Jonathan to really be able to respond, he's gonna he only has so many maneuvers he can do to turn. Yeah, um, and turn in such a way where he's not just gonna get blown up. I think he's got to cut in here and return fire, or at least you know see him nose to nose. I think fighting in this asteroid field would actually maybe be a bit of an advantage for Jonathan. You, you never can quite tell, but taking away some of the B-wing shenanigans with the K-turns and the barrel rolling around, uh, if you just kind of plant them right in the middle of that asteroid belt, it gets really hard for them to accurately and effectively move around like Paul likes to do. Um, but they do have a cl pretty clear shot here right in the middle of the board. If they come down this straight path, they should be okay. We'll see what he does. And let's see. Are we going to meet? He could also accelerate out down to that corner, which looks like that's exactly what he's going to do. Maybe try to uh, flip around and get the advantage here on the second pass. Interesting. Yeah, and, and really, Paul was having to make the decision there. Is he going to come in on me or not? And I wonder if that's going to uh, mean that he doesn't quite accelerate down the field like he would if he knew that uh, Jonathan's ships are going to end up a little farther away. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Paul here do mid-range movements. Um, I, I doubt he went max on that. And I, I would be surprised to see him do very short-range movements. But we'll see. He may have played it really conservative, which could end up working out for him. All right, Jonathan, another X-Wing in. And the approach here has been very, uh, very planned, very calculated. Always fun to see uh, how these approaches happen and often can be a very critical moment of the game to see when we get engagement, who gets the first engagement, and uh, usually whoever positions a little bit better in this point of the game is going to get that first shot. Even if it's a three range, sometimes you can get a free one or two damage in without return, and that 
in a top four match can be game winning. Looks like Paul's going three. Nice mid-range movement. He's going to be in a good position because uh, those X-Wings are really going to need to turn around here. This is very good for Paul, I think, ultimately, depending on how far these B-Wings go out there. Uh, I would love to see a three forward here. That would be nice. Looks like he's holding on to that template, so maybe we'll see it. And having it aside here, I think he's wondering, am I going to hit that asteroid, potentially? He could also barrel roll. Yeah. He needs to. Looks like he's doing three, so solid mid-range movement. Not really a way that goes bad for you. He... Uh, Jonathan can't turn and go super far, uh, so there's only, it just, it makes sense. There's no reason to go short, no reason to go long here. Looks like he's barrel rolling to get just a little bit closer. Yeah, there he is. He, and uh, just outside the range of the target lock there. And it, it's a, that's a pro, pro way of doing it too, because you can see, check the target lock, see how close they are to range three, because it's the same range. Absolutely. And uh, if you need to inch forward a little bit, you can barrel roll to do it. At this point, it looks like Paul's going to get a nice first strike off without and uh, look Jonathan at that. being able to return anything. That is exactly how you uh, how you maneuver those B-Wings there, getting a free shot here. I think that's some beautiful maneuvering by Paul, and it's going to pay off for him. That's a nice vector there. I love that attack. I think these X-Wings are going to struggle to get in an advantageous position now. I think Paul has taken over the middle of the board, and with those B-Wings and advanced sensors, he's going to have a lot of play here to stay on top of this maneuver. And we've got ye old X-Wing moving up. And that is Luke, the the man. That is the man there with all those upgrades. And he's going to potentially soak up some damage here. All right. We are approximately 12 minutes into the game. And I think we are going to have our first shot fired. Amazing. Looks like uh, three against the outermost rookie pilot here. It looks like two uh, focus, focus there and nothing. So really, I think needing a little bit to pay off here. You have three three attack dice on three defense dice, so odds aren't uh, nice. No, it's three hits, looks like. Is that yeah. two crits there? Is that, uh, uh, I'm not sure. Oh, no wow. evade, and that is exactly what we're talking about there. Shield's gone, and I think we're going to take a two damage. Two shields and a damage. And a crit, right? Let's see, yeah, that is face up, so that is a crit. Wow. Massive. That is a massive swing there. And so now we have one X-Wing down to two health, and it's the outermost X-Wing, so that, that guy is not getting away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Now, the uh, draw there fired, refresh my memory there. Is that taking a crit? I believe it's you take a crit. Yeah, you take a crit, so that's why it's so good on loot, because you can uh, absorb it with a shield and then just take a green maneuver and and get rid of or gain the shield right back. I'm wondering why the uh, why that crit wasn't drawn there. I am curious as well. I'm gonna do a little recon here. Let's let's take a look. See. All right. Looks like all the X-wings here are uh, turning in unison, and that's really it's a beautiful formation. I also love that uh, Paul is actually doing the maneuvers for Jonathan here. Uh, very, again, just speaking to the community here. Yeah, draw their fire when a friendly ship at range one is hit by an attack. You may suffer one of the uncanceled critical results instead of the target ship. And I'm curious why he didn't take it. Wasn't used um, there? Because it would have, uh, it would have disappeared on this turn, assuming Luke takes a green. But maybe he didn't want to have to take a green with Luke. Jonathan knows the answer to that. Even if it's sorry, I, uh, I, <laughs> I screwed whoops. up. Yeah. I don't. I don't think you just straight up forget about one of the only cards that you've put on uh, put on your ships. There, I, I'll bet there was a reason for it. Look at this pass coming in here, and using advanced sensors to pre-focus. Yeah. And Is he doing a K turn? I don't think no. he's can. I think he was maybe concerned about the asteroid uh, just in yes. case uh, that happens. And that ultimately does give a bit of an advantage to the B-Wings on those asteroid fields. I may have misspoke earlier. I, <laughs> I'm thinking more and more now that this is going to favor the B-Wings ultimately. Absolutely. And it's so they're so crazy that they can do that because next turn he'll be able to barrel roll before moving so he doesn't hit that asteroid. Four focus over there on Paul's side of the board. And 
here comes Luke really facing down what looks to be a, a devastating attack squadron. And the question is, do you focus on Luke here or do you cut out the flak? What do you think, Zach? I think you focus. Focus on Luke? Yeah, hands down. Why be tempted to, to try to clear out some of these easier-to-kill rookie pilots, especially that one that's already injured, get some fire off the board? Well, he's going to get a shoot first. Um, and Biggs is on the board, so you don't really have an option. Right, Biggs right, is right. within range one of his entire squad. Looks like we get two hits and a focus. Two hits, we're going to focus that on. That does leave Luke fairly open on the defense. Two focus, are we gonna yeah, we're gonna take those two evades, so that's yep, gonna so be one, one damage. damage. Yeah, and the interesting thing about Luke here, because he has four shields, he can take four damage and then completely recover from it. Yeah, he can. So he, he's kind of the meat shield. You want them to attack him, you're totally okay if they attack him. He's gonna take forever to kill. Yeah, you, you clear the rookie pilot too. Absolutely. I think you clear the rookies. You definitely clear the one with, with two health left. Yes. Looks like they're tape, taping the uh, old star field down there. Nice. Always always a worthwhile thing. Looks like Jonathan's returning, or uh, Paul's returning Paul's fire. fire. Two hits and no evades on Jonathan's wow. end. Wow. We're, he's had zero evades this game. Two more damage there. Oh, you know what? I think there were uh, potentially, looks like Luke only has one shield left. I'm wondering if there were two criticals. Ah, uh, yeah, that would make sense. And and yeah. Luke took one and the, uh, the X-Wing had to take the other one. I think we got it. And two hits, one focus. So that's going to be three hits total. And one one of, evade. He got his first evade. I think that's going to be a little... And late. that is another damage. That's on Luke there, isn't it? Yeah, Luke is down to two health. If he can knock... It's a tough call here because you have Luke, who you could potentially knock out, but you also have that range one uh, X-Wing that you also don't mind getting rid of. Yeah. So I feel like if I, if I have a good chance of getting Luke out... You almost have to go for it. Those shields are going to come back. Yeah, deciding right now if uh, the asteroid is crossed. Remember, it's point of least uh, distance, point to point. I, I'm wondering if that asteroid is in the way or not. I don't think it is. Looks like he's shooting the rookie. Paul's Range shooting one. the rookie and rolls fire there. Four wow. hits. And no evades. To a focus. And that is going to take that rookie pilot out of this match. So he's, it's important to note when you take damage, even if the ship's dead, you still draw the cards. You do indeed, um, and this has taken a huge swing for Paul here. Just that alpha strike, I think, was a massive play, and uh, Jonathan, no luck on the evades there. Absolutely, that is a rough start. And really, only one shield down on Paul's end, and we've got Luke hurting, and we've also got uh, a rookie pilot completely blown out of the sky. And you or know space, I should say. There's no sky in space, right? Paul really too. I mean, he he'll have the advantage going to the next round. His pilot skills are he's even moving after the fact. Be able to barrel roll after and move. It, it's going to be good for Paul here. We'll see if uh, Jonathan can return some fire. Range three on Bigs. We're going to focus it out for three hits. Not a bad start. And uh, two evades or three evades because the asteroid. Asteroid in range three it looks like, right? All right, looks like Biggs is out of shield. He's down to two health left. Actually, no, I don't think he got... Is there an asteroid there? Where? I don't feel like they're ta they're taking the, the asteroid here. I think they're saying that was not... Yeah, I don't think it's going through the asteroid. Now, it may be on pilot number... Uh, yeah, let's see that. Well, the interesting part here is you, it's the nearest points within that firing arc. Mm -hmm. um, so when Paul was attacking, it wasn't the case. Yep. But it's potentially the case... When he flipped around. Yeah, now we have X-Wing numero dos, uh, rookie pilot number two, and I think that Three. is going to be an asteroid. Two hits and a focus, and he's doing it. Wow. Three hits. That Three is hits. massive. Three hits. you got to spend it, of course. Is that one of Wow, eight? Biggs oh, is man. gone. Biggs is out. So even it up here. Well done, Jonathan. So at this point, I, I mean, that's humongous. Luke, Luke's down to two health, which is big. But... At least you're you're solid on attacks at this point. It looks like uh, Paul's returning fire with his rookie. Rookie pilot, two hits, two evades. That's exactly what Jonathan needed to stay in this thing. And uh, now we get back to, to the back the to dials. the dials, man. And the B wings, I think, are going to have a critical advantage here. And it's important to note uh, and cool that Paul is moving Jonathan's ships here. Yes, that is a high level of trust at this that level. That is incredible. And. You, you got to think, B wings and X wings can do the same thing here, and it looks like that's exactly what they're doing. You got K turns going on to stay in the dogfight, 
but the B-Wings can take an action as well. And I think that, of course, is going to be a significant difference in Absolutely. this uh, back and forth here. And, and now this is potentially a really good move for Jonathan. He's Again, he's moving Jonathan's ship, so it's confusing because they have a lot of the same ships. It's fantastic. Uh, but he's clogging that lane right there so that if the B-Wings do end up doing the K-turn, it may make Paul forced into barrel rolling but instead of focusing. Well done, Jonathan. That's and a good move. We just have a nice one forward there. And the B-Wings really what I'm looking for here. Going to see where they end up. The nice thing about that that uh, advanced sensors is they can pretty much end up anywhere. He's barrel rolling now, so I, I've got to assume we have a K-turn coming up. Yeah. Which is what makes that so awesome. Um, it just, just freedom so of much, movement. So yeah. much added mobility here. A lot of freedom. Yeah. K -turn. And that is a K-turn. So typically, I mean, without those advanced sensors, that would have been a beautiful move on Jonathan's part. Um, and it's just the fact of the game that Paul has the advanced sensors here. And there we go. Still shutting off a pretty valuable lane, I feel like. And I, that, why do I get the feeling that B-Wing on number three here is going to be barrel rolling towards Paul? Yeah, there he goes. And yep. uh, then he's probably in a K-turn as well. And it's going to be a face-off between the old B-Wing and, uh, and the rookie pilot, number two there. I think this is a fairly balanced uh, maneuver exchange here. Um, Paul, I think, has more mobility in general. Um, but Jonathan, I think, did well to, to do what he can to kind of get out of the way. And we still have to see where Luke's going to go. And not not a great place for him right now. And Quite curious. Honestly, if he just did a one forward and bumped. Maybe a 4K turn, I think that's what I see. It's like a 4K, yeah. Using the uh, wand to mark mark the base of that X-wing there. Yeah, it's a really clever way to know where a ship's supposed to be. And here we go, getting that maneuver template in there. Going to see if we can not hit the asteroid. I think he just skirted it there. I love it. That's a good maneuver. It's a great maneuver. Well done, Jonathan. Man, this is this is gonna be the turn. Great exchanges coming on here. I would of, love to see a lot of damage there to the number three B wing. Not too much focus on the board. So at this point, we're just kind of rolling dice, um, and this is this is potentially where those B wings are gonna shine. Uh, to have all those shields to just absorb the damage, uh, whereas the X wings might be taking some criticals that could really hamper them at this point. And ultimately, if these K-turns, this K-turn back and forth keeps up, the B-Wings are going to have the advantage here over time. So I think Jonathan's going to have to figure out how this plan is going to change for him so he can get out of that lock. Because a lot of times, as you would expect in dogfights, the back and forth is a pretty consistent pattern to get into. Yeah, I almost think here Jonathan is going to need to remove Paul's other X-Wing. Uh, he needs to, to get ahead on in the dice department. Uh, looks one, like one hit. One hit's not, not going to quite do it. One evade, and he gets it. That is how it goes. Moving on. I don't know. I, I think there I almost would have shot after... Uh, I'm not sure who... It, was that Luke shooting there? Well, it was only one evade, so... Yeah. I don't know, though. Like it, it, It's going to take forever to whittle down those B-wings. Um, if you can get rid of uh, Paul's rookie pilot here... Yeah, we're shooting at Luke, I believe. I think there was pointing at Luke. Looks like, Looks like one, one hit. hit and two focus there. One evade. One evade. Now we look at uh, B wing number three, I believe. I need to lock these pilot skills into my skull here. Yeah, we're we're at B wing. Yeah, we we should be. At B Interesting to note how low the pilot skills are here. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, I'm particularly fond of high pilot skill ships, but I know uh, most players don't use those. Yeah. Well, the, I think the ultimate gamble with high pilot skill is if you come up against someone else doing a high pilot skill, a lot of times it doesn't really do you much good. 
Especially if theirs is a little bit higher. It's the worst. It's all that wasted points. Looks like we have B-Wing. I'm not sure who he's shooting at here. Oh, just fire, man. Nailed it. Absolute fire. Two focus. Wow. And that is going to be Luke. Is he going to be out of here? I think Luke is a goner. Uh, he does still get the evade for Luke's ability. But that's still enough damage to make it happen. Still enough damage to get Luke off the table. That is a huge swing. I think Jonathan's going to have to really do something fantastic here to uh, turn this one around. That is really not what you want to see. You know, we lost Biggs early, but now Luke is off the table. We just got two rookie pilots here facing off against two fully loaded B-Wings and uh, another uh, rookie pilot. Yeah. So the numbers game just does not work here for Jonathan. Yeah, and I mean, the rest of Paul's ships haven't been touched. He's literally no damage down, no shields gone. Uh, and he has been rolling some some bombs right now, just tons of of all hits, and uh, Jonathan not really getting the same in return. But a lot of times this kind of thing evens out, and Jonathan could easily find himself back in this game after a turn or two. One thing that is 100% true about this game is it is not over until the last ship is gone. Yes. Uh, I think we both learned that. In any dice game, uh, it just takes a couple turns of the dice going your way, and it can really turn around. Hit and a crit there. And no, no evade. So that's going to be two shields off of that B wing. Looking good. Looks like and we got the, uh, the other rookie pilot here. Yeah, number three is rolling on, I don't know if it's the B-Wing or not, we're gonna find out. Looks like three hits. Three hits, using the focus here. And it is that B-Wing. And so two more shields off that B-Wing. down to one shield. All right, looks like uh, Paul's, Paul's rookie here. I'm not sure who he's attacking. And accepting that hit, looks like two. Three with a focus. Rookie pilot number three here. One, One evade. evade, so two damage. That'll be two shields, looks like. All right, back to the dials. And we're back. That's That was really unfortunate losing Luke there. Uh, he, that's typically where you can kind of send Luke off to the side with green maneuvers and just let him recoup while uh, your other ships do their business. Yeah, Luke really, really had a bad match this time around. Didn't do really, I think, what he was meant to do. Didn't take advantage of R2 terribly much, draw their fire terribly much. Shield upgrade didn't last long. And uh, sometimes that's the breaks. Got a K turn there from uh, rookie pilot number three. And... Number two, we'll see where he ends up here. Looks like a one forward. And it's it's so tough to maneuver around these B-Wings at this point, just because they can get... They've got the barrel rolls now, and uh, I think Jonathan just trying to cover as many vectors as he can. Probably has uh, rookie pilot number one locked down, and we're just going to see if the B-Wings can... Yeah. Yeah, number one on Paul's end is, is looking like he's in trouble here. I think he's got... Some damage coming his way, but these B-Wings are going to get right behind or next to these X-Wings, and I think it's going to be a pretty significant thing. Now, they were uh, stressed, keep in mind, so they weren't able to do much of anything aside from standard maneuver here, and we're going to be hugging. We may end up with a dead uh, rookie pilot number one on Paul's end. And That's, you know, it's one of those things. The less ships you have, the less targets they have to shoot at. Yep. So if you can maneuver well, a lot of times you can get out of really any harm and catch back up over a turn or two. And this is good. This is ultimately good for Jonathan. B-Wing number two looks like the only shot that uh, is going to get by on the B-Wings, and I think that's going to be through an asteroid. I don't know if it's quite range one. I believe it to be range two there just from eyeing it. Yeah, I would guess range two. Range two through an asteroid, so not awful. So B-Wing number two, he's the highest pilot skill now, isn't he? I think so. Range two through an asteroid. So... It's going to be three dice on three on dice. Rookie number two. Two, two hits. hits. And Jonathan Didn't needs some good evades here. There's one. One. So he's going to take one damage. Or one shield there lost. That could have gone worse. That could have gone worse. Could have yeah. gone a lot worse. Could have gone a lot better. All right. So three is actually going there on the B-Wing at range one. 
Number two. Four to one dice. This is a really great. This is a great. Nice. Good roll. Two hits and a two crit. Two hits and a crit. Wow. Fantastic. This could be a turn for Jonathan here. Yeah. No evade. He's going to focus it out. So he's going to take two shields there. One shield, oh, and he okay. will take it's the crit. The damage one. All right, we're down and to let's crit. Let's see what we got. Uh, take a red maneuver, take a damage, I think is what he drew there. Ah, that's nice. So there's no more... Uh, yeah, that could be very good no for him. No more K turns there. Could be very good. Range two on uh, that rookie pilot there, number one. One like hit, one crit. One hit, one crit. This could be huge. Double eyeballs, so he's going to take both shields gone. Take both shields. This is getting hot, man. This is getting... This is... Jonathan is definitely catching up here. Looks like rookie pilot number one on Paul's side is going to be taking a range three shot there. Uh, 3v3. Yeah, this is good dice here. One, one hit. hit. Jonathan's got this. Evaded. One evade. Well Very done. Nice. I think we're back in this game. We got I ourselves think, a game I here, think gentlemen. We got ourselves a game. Yes, sir. Boy, that crit could come back to completely haunt that B wing there. Not be able to K turn is big. Well, they, it could K turn. It could just take a damage from doing it. Absolutely, but. yeah. And we're gonna pursue here. It looks like. Gonna miss out on the action, but we do get a green maneuver to clear the. No, is that a collision? Uh. That's going to be close. I think it was a collision. Okay. But it, it still clears the stress, and it it really guarantees that you're going to be able to shoot that B-Wing unless he does some fancy maneuvering. Some some truly fancy maneuvering, yeah. And where does this X-Wing go? Do we K-turn this X-Wing? I'm not sure what he does. Or do you just recover here? I think you maybe don't. Yeah, you just do that, get past the ships. If that uh, X-Wing comes up to threat. And, oh, man, yeah, yeah. That could be a great shot on rookie pilot number one. We'll call him Red Rookie and Black Rookie. Uh, sounds good. He's going to focus. And he yeah. does get to focus. Let's see where this guy goes. Red Rookie, is he turning? Ooh, that's perfect. That's exactly what Jonathan needed to happen there. Yes. Um, man, that's going to be a range one with focus. That is intense. Black 2 there is has got a phenomenal shot. Uh, if he doesn't get cleaned up by this B-Wing first. And that's the, you know, the B-Wings have a higher pilot skill, so they can definitely do some damage before this gets underway. So he focuses and then does the K-turn. Uh, very good move. Big, big, big. And those rookie pilots just still just holding on on uh, Jonathan's side. Looks like we've got one with only one shield left and one with no shields whatsoever. But the uh, the red rookie is not going to be able. Red rookie one isn't going to get to to shoot here. No, not not a shot so, at all. Uh, well, he might. He might have a shot on that uh, black three. I it, can't tell from the angle. If he's alive, he if might, he's he alive, might get it. man, this B B wing maneuver here is big. If he's doing a K turn, um, he's got to decide whether he's willing to risk landing on. Because uh, if he does the red move, he's going to take a damage. So if he lands on that asteroid, that I think he's eyeing to see if that asteroid is going to be in his way. It could be a, a, a really massive, uh, really massive maneuver here. Probably has the option to do the ideal versus the safe. And I feel like Paul still has a little bit of an edge here, so you might opt for a safe uh, barrel roll. It's like uh, Paul's checking to see how many shields that one has left, and Black Two uh, only has one shield left at this point. And here comes the barrel roll. Yeah, I've got a feeling we're going to see a K turn, and that's going to be a damage on that B wing. Is it? Um, yeah, he is. It looks like he's K turning. And there. he's going to roll the damage here. Nothing. Ooh, man, that could have. <laughs> that's massive, man. That is so massive uh, that he didn't get a damage. Jonathan's there. heart skips a beat. I want it. I. Let me see where three ends up here. It's a solid spot. Yeah. Looks like Paul's gonna have a lot of shots, assuming he stays alive. But those B wings are gonna get to go first. 
All right, range two shot. See if, two. Ev see if the evades the X-Wing can get it done. Hitting a crit there. One evade. One evade. So that's going to be one critical. I don't know what he do got. Not, do not know what he got. Couldn't hear it. And through an asteroid range, range two. two on the black two here. 3v3. Both have a focus. Might as well spend it for spend one. Spend it for a hit. We need an evade here. Yeah, easily. Yeah, you got it. All right. Now, I think red one here is doomed. All right, black three, uh, range two. He's only rolling two attack dice, which makes me think that's what the crit was, yeah? Yeah, I think so. Looks like One he crit, it. and he dodged it. Looks like range one here, black two on uh, red one. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Got the focus to back it up. And that's going to be a hit. Two hits and a crit after the focus. That could be massive here. Zero shields on that X-Wing. He does have a focus, though. Two focus. Wow. So he's going to take one crit. All right. That could be a big crit. Let's see what he gets. Weapon, Weapon malfunction. malfunction. Fair enough. Boy, I, Jonathan really wanted to clear that ship off the board here, and I, I think that the odds of that happening were, were solid. Now he gets a shot. Weapon malfunction. Minus one. I believe it's minus one. Oh my gosh, rolling gold, hitting a crit. One, One evade. evade. Wow. It's going to be another crit. Ignore secondary weapons, so he just turns it face down. Yeah. All right, man. Well, my heart's racing. Back to the dials. Let's see what happens. And I think this is where the true bloodshed is going to uh, be... And Jonathan just flying through here. Interesting maneuver. It's tough. The combination of offense and defense you need to play. You can't lose a ship here. Yes, you cannot lose a ship, and I think we're gonna we're gonna have a hard time not losing a ship here. I feel like there are gonna be ships lost. That really, that, that turn was so big for Jonathan. I feel like it could have swung. It definitely yeah. could have swung. Paul Paul didn't roll the damage on the uh, the B-Wings critical for taking the rev maneuver. Uh, he only only got one damage in on the X-Wing. Really could have been a huge turn, and uh, it's, it's feeling more like Paul has the advantage again. I think he's getting on top here, definitely. The numbers game says yes. And his it is a game of numbers. B-Wing just moving forward, but that is, I believe, going to give him a shot on Black 2 there. It's going to be close. It's going to be very close. I threw an asteroid if he does get it. But that arc is just right on that line. I don't think he'll be able to see it. Uh, the angle of the angle here it makes it tough to tell, but we will see. All right, and then uh, we have the other B-Wing. Looks like we got a uh, target lock coming on, and that's really going to push the odds for next round, unless he has a shot this round. That'll be nice. Yeah, I think taking the target lock there is definitely the right move. There's no reason to be in a rush here. You, you've got the advantage. Oh, uh, look at that shot. I don't know if Black 2 here is going to even get a chance. If he does, though... And there's the barrel roll. Get him he out of range. He won't a chance. He's checking the barrel roll. I don't think he's going to fit. Nope, right. doesn't fit. Can't do it. May as well go for the focus and try to finish it off. Yep. And starting here, uh, checking out two on two. Range one, focus three for hits. three hits. No evades, throwing rocks here. And that is unfortunately, a, that's going to be what? Two, two damage, damage on. Yep. All shields he down. He has two health left among two ships.
Looks like uh, Black 2 is firing back. Yeah. Look, looks like two hits and a crit and a focus. And that B-Wing is off the table. A glimmer of hope, uh, a glimmer of hope here. That other B-Wing at full shield, full health. A this little, certainly is not over. I'm but worried it's... about it. Rookie Pilot's going to have to do some work here on Paul's end to seal this thing up. He needs a shot here on two. Looks like we have range, range two. Range two. Red one on red, black two. Boy, this is a roll. Two, two hits. hits. Not a bad roll. We need some. We need some evades here. Oh, two focus. Wow. Oh man. And that's gonna take black two off the table here. Boy, rookie pilot number three. This is your time to either be promoted, and promoted hard, or. Uh, being nothing but a memory. How how big of a deal is it that Paul got that Luke off the board so oh, early? Like, just I'm, massive. If it, Luke is still around here, this is a... It, you, you know that Jonathan could cite any number of games in the top 16 and before the top 16 where Luke is on the board the entire time, soaking up crits, healing himself, R2-D2-ing around, just being a complete nuisance, and just taking off the board really... Uh, turn one when the fighting began. And yeah, and if, if Luke could have even lasted one or even two more turns, at this point, you know, I think Paul's in the lead, but he's really only in the lead by a turn or two. Like, he's yeah. he's only a handful of damage ahead. Um, and that's going to probably be the difference here. Mm. And uh, the odds here are just very low for Jonathan. Of course, it's possible. Oh, it is absolutely possible. It's possible. And uh, now, basically, rule uh, clarification here, we had uh, red one here with a weapon malfunction that wasn't appropriately uh, planned for. So uh, Jonathan going to put the damage back on top of the stack. Doesn't ultimately matter terribly much. I think he's going to get a free evade, so they're redoing the attack. They're basically redoing the attack to see if it matters. And it does not no, matter. It does not matter. Okay. And that's the best way to handle that, I think, for for sure. Appropriate way to handle that and, uh, you know, self-refereed as best you can. And that's that's how you like to see it done. But if he had stayed on the board, that, that could have been a pretty significant little change of the game. There. Absolutely. This is really tight. Uh, Paul's definitely got the advantage here, but... It's it's actually pretty close. And again, here here this is a skill in X-wing, closing the game. Closing the game. Your opponent gets down to one ship, and it's tougher when you're playing an Imperial player because they're a little bit more maneuverable. Uh, but down to one ship, can you hunt down the last ship and make sure that you get them off the board? Nice. And he goes ahead and flips that crit over. May as well. Yeah, I don't know. I. I may have taken a, a focus there. Um, what was that crit over there? Is that a weapon off? Like yeah, that? yeah. I don't think he's going to have a shot on anybody this turn. He's going to get shot at. Um, I think a, a focus may may have paid off bigger there. We'll see what happens. He's rolling for that crit. Oh, man, looking for the... Boy, he's he's a very gr good injured pilot, I'll say that. Well, he, he actually wanted to get a hit there to flip it over. Oh, he, yeah, he wasn't doing that's the, what he was trying to do. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's doing the red here, yeah? Uh, yeah, he took the focus. He took the focus as the action. Yeah. He was rolling for the red. Well, so. No, no, he was he was rolling for the uh, the X-Wing. He was trying to get rid of the weapons malfunction. No, 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 I'm talking about the B-Wing. Isn't this the B-Wing that has the uh, can't turn, can't do a red maneuver? It was the he, other, it was the other B-Wing. The B-Wing, this, okay. the B -wing, this one is, is, hasn't been touched. He's flying free. He is. This, this is not looking good, but we'll see. In the sights, and... Uh, that's going to be focused for a hit. Looks like a crit as well. And one evade, and that, That's gonna that be is going to be the game. Wow, fantastic game. What a great game. Quick play, just two guys who are absolutely on their game. You can tell that these are some fantastic x wing players. Man, huge congrats to uh, Paul for moving on, and another huge congrats to Jonathan for getting to the top four in maybe one of the hardest ways possible. And uh, you, you guys have both shown how, how good X-Wing can be. So thank you guys both. 
And thank you guys for watching. Uh, we sure do appreciate the views and hope you guys love X-Wing as much as we do. If you want to support what we're doing here, you can get all the ships from our online store, teamcovenant.com slash store. And uh, you can also grab a set of our templates, which are, are quite good, and, and we certainly love using them here at our store in Tulsa, Oklahoma. If you're ever in the area, stop by and say hi. So thanks again to Paul and Jonathan. And Paul, good luck going into the finals. We're going to catch the next game of the top four to see who meets Paul there. And it's sure to be yet another heater, I'm sure. So uh, thank you so much for watching, guys, and we'll catch you on the next match of X-Wing Top 4.